Love Bites Dog is the second episode of the fourth season of Frasier. This is directed by Jeff Melman. And as always, there will be spoilers from now as I talk about the episode and share some thoughts. I will go through things chronologically. And I rather like this episode. It's nice to spend a little bit more time with Bulldog, getting a little bit of character development, getting to see a side of him that we don't normally see. We also have some pretty strong messages in here. One, you never know how somebody might react to a situation, as I think Bulldog definitely responded in a way that's very atypical and certainly quite fascinating, but also what goes around comes around. It starts off with Bulldog on the phone down at KACL. He is clearly breaking up with somebody, and not only that, he ends up breaking up with two people at the same time. Roz then wants to set Fraser up with somebody on a blind date, and he's not really interested in that, but this is ultimately what happens. We then have a rather adorable scene that I loved. We're back at the apartment. Martin has come in from walking Eddie and it's very wet. Eddie dragged him through a lot of puddles and Eddie is walking into the house very slowly. He is feeling very sorry for himself, but it doesn't last too long because Daphne takes off Martin's wet shoes and Eddie brings him a slipper. And he says to him, you'll always be my very best boy. <laughs> just as Fraser is walking behind Martin and Eddie, which I just thought was perfect. So very, very adorable. Fraser is dressed very smartly. Turns out he is going on this date. And meanwhile, Daphne has put Martin's shoes in the microwave to dry them. And she left them in for too long. She burnt them. We'll come back to this in a minute. But I just want to take a second to acknowledge how disgusting that is. These are wet shoes that have been out in the presumably muddy, wet puddles in the park. And she's putting them in the microwave, not even inside a microwave-safe bag inside the microwave. I mean, microwaving shoes to dry them, to me, is a completely bizarre concept. But she just put these wet, presumably muddy, dirty shoes. I'm not going to go on about it, but I found it to be very strange. Let me know if you've ever microwaved your shoes. But certainly the way it went with Daphne and burning them, I don't think there's going to be anybody doing it after the fact. We then go down to Cafe Nervosa. And I will say we get a lot of different locations in this episode. We see a few other things further down the line, and I'll mention them when we get there. But we have uh, quite a variety here. And I don't know if this is because it's a, a new season and maybe they've got a bigger budget or if it's just a coincidence. But I thought that was obviously Cafe Nervosa is not a new set, but we do have... A different location that I don't think we've been to before. I'll, I'll mention it when we get there. But we have a couple of other locations. Niles is placing an ad in the paper for his therapy sessions. And then Roz comes in with Sharon. She's played by Jennifer Campbell. And we get to see Fraser and Sharon talking for probably less than a minute. And sure, it seems to be going well. But then Bulldog comes in. And Bulldog recognises Sharon because she was a pro golfer. And they have a little bit of back and forth with Sharon recognising Bulldog because he said some not very nice things about how he doesn't think golf is a real sport or something like that. And they basically then end up leaving Fraser to go and play golf. Loser buys dinner. I want to point out that Sharon wasn't ditching Fraser's date to go golfing with Bulldog because actually Roz didn't tell Sharon it was a blind date. Sharon was meeting Roz for coffee at Cafe Nervosa and then Roz at the last minute had an unexpected call that she had to deal with and then Fraser said, well, you're here, let's have coffee. So I don't think I mentioned that before, so I think I just want to make it clear that Sharon didn't abandon the date to be with Bulldog. She didn't even know it was a date. So another good message there, I guess, if you're going to set somebody up on a blind date, it might be worth letting them know that it's a date. Otherwise, things might end up the way they did in this episode. We then have Martin and Daphne in the car, which is quite unusual, not a location we get that frequently. And we have a bit of banter between them. And then we cut to KSEL again. And Roz is playfully punching Fraser on the arm because she tried to get hold of Sharon all weekend. She hasn't been in. So Roz assumed that she'd spent the weekend with Fraser. And I really, <laughs> I loved the moment where Roz is playfully hitting him and Fraser briefly explains what happens. And then she hits him for real. I'm not saying I like the fact that she hit him 
to cause pain but i just think that the, the, the progression of those few seconds was very well done and then bulldog comes in and he is crazy about sharon and here we have a different side of bulldog because we're used to him just going through girl after girl or flirting with everybody we don't really ever get to see any genuine emotions with him but he's rather smitten here i will say that it's very quick considering they've known each other for two three days but at the same time, he was aware of her before. So maybe in his mind, he's had a longer relationship with her than two or three days. And we then cut back to Daphne and Martin again. Here we have another different location. We're actually outside. And it's very rare for us to be outside with Fraser. That's very rare for any sitcom because obviously the, just the logistics of filming a sitcom outside. But... We have the, this homeless man who's telling them that the shoe shop has moved. And I didn't expect to happen what happened. He said he'll tell them where it's moved to for a kiss. And Martin assumed what I assumed. He was wanting a kiss from Daphne. No, he wanted a kiss from Martin. Didn't expect that at all. That's actually the last we get of the shoes. And obviously it's filler. It's just fluff. It's just to support the main narrative. But I do feel like I was left wanting a resolution. Did Martin end up getting his shoes? I, I was left without that information. So I would have liked them to have concluded that bit of the narrative. And if I were to suggest how they could have done that within the time frame, I'd say the scene in the car wasn't that interesting to me. So they could have moved the scene with the homeless man to there and then given us some kind of resolution with Martin getting his shoes or something. I don't know. But I was just left wanting a little bit more for that. We're then down at KCL for the rest of the episode. And Niles has got a typo in his ad. His ad was meant to say he was a young specialist. And it said he was a hung specialist. Bulldog is then on the phone to Sharon, asking her out again. And she dumps him. Is it really dumping him when they were only together for a few days? I'm not sure. But nevertheless, she's making it clear to Bulldog that she doesn't want to see him anymore. And Bulldog struggles to, to carry on with his show. Fraser has to take over, much to nobody's delight except mine. And Roz then goes into the men's room. And there we have, I think, another set design. I, I don't think we've been in the men's room down at KCL before. I could be wrong. But certainly it's not somewhere we go frequently. So it was a nice different location, as nice as a restroom can be for a, for a setting. And Ross is trying to get Bulldog to come out of the bathroom. And Niles goes in and he ends up helping Bulldog kind of reluctantly. Bulldog ends up screaming like a wounded animal. And then Fraser comes in. And Bulldog says something that I think is actually something that Fraser could benefit from hearing but also not just for the benefit of others but also for the benefit of Fraser because I think Fraser has mentioned before and I don't know whether he mentioned this in Cheers or in Fraser if you know what I'm talking about please let me know but he's mentioned that when you're a psychiatrist your friends will constantly come to you for advice you always have to be on you always have to be in psychiatrist mode and this is initially his response to Bulldog's problem, but Bulldog says to him, will you stop being a shrink and just be like a guy? And I think that that's actually really great advice because while Fraser has said at some point that being a psychiatrist means your friends will constantly come to you for advice, while I'm sure that is true, sometimes they just want advice from a friend, not necessarily from Fraser the psychiatrist. And here we have Bulldog pointing that out. And I think that that's something Fraser could do well to remember, both for his benefit and the benefit of others. And this is exactly what he does. He does become like a guy. And we get to see him saying things that he definitely doesn't believe, but things that actually really help Bulldog in the moment. And he gets a bit carried away and he's continuing to talk to Niles like this. <laughs> and Niles actually slaps him out of it. Um, and it was uh, not too bad at all. And then we end with Fraser playing the air violin with Niles and Eddie hiding his head. I don't have an issue with the ending, but they also could have used that time to wrap up the story with Martin. Even just showing Martin putting on the new pair of shoes and Eddie doing something cute. But unfortunately, 
they didn't do that and I was left just feeling a little unsatisfied with how that part of the episode uh, ended. Again, it is padding. It's not part of the main story, but I was just left feeling like it didn't quite conclude itself. But that aside... I think Love Bites Dog is definitely a great episode. Nice to spend some more time with Bulldog and uh, a lot of different locations here as well. So all things considered, Love Bites Dog is definitely not a bad episode. <laughs>